How are we doing, LeBron? This is uh, Stephen Smith, the touchdown Alabama. I know uh, Coach Saban has talked about uh, Jordan Battle in the secondary, but how have you seen Daniel Wright raise his playing level? Um, Daniel, um, we came in together, so um, I could easily, you know, tell he was a hardworking guy. So, you know, he's just been improving every day, in and out, and um, you know, working with Jordan. I think they, you know, work off each other really well. So. Okay, we'll go to, uh, and like I said, if you got questions, please use the raise your hand function. We'll go to Charlie Potter next. Hey, LeBron, I just want to ask about Dylan Moses and, and how big it is for him to be back there and calling the defense again. Oh, Dylan, yeah, that's my guy. Um, you know, to have him back, that's a that's a huge impact, you know, he has on the game, every play in and out. And, um, you know, just to play along him with a guy like that, a leader like that, um, it's something I'll take for granted. Okay, we will go with Brett Hudson. Uh, LeBron, with so many defensive linemen going between end and nose guard to cross train, have you been asked to to do that? And if so, how have you kind of adapted your game to, to nose guard if you're forced to do that? Uh, I think playing at the University of Alabama, everybody, you know, on the D-line, you have to be versatile. So, um, you know, just depending on what the game plan is. So... Okay, we will go with, uh, again, raise your hand if you got questions. We'll go with Michael Casagrande. Hey, LeBron, what feels different about this defensive line this year uh, with the depth you guys have and the experience at back this year? Um, I mean, it's different, but at the same time, uh, we have the same goals. Um, you know, we got to be, you know, create a new line of scrimmage, um, play hard, get off blocks, you know, make plays, really. Do our job. That's really the most thing I think, you know, take from last year. Something that we got to refocus on. So I think doing our job is the thing to start from. Okay, we will go to uh, James Ogletree. Hey, LeBron. It looks like Missouri's offensive line is has pretty good size. Uh, a lot of guys pretty tall, pretty big. Um, and they've talked about wanting to have kind of a downhill power running game. What have you seen out of them, just their blocking and, and what they want to do in the run game? Uh, Missouri's on, they got a great O line. Um, you know, they come off really hard and uh, trying to punish, you know, the defenders. So, um, you know, this Missouri as a whole, they're a great team. And um, it's going to be, you know, a great. Um... Okay, we'll go. Back to Michael Casagrande. I know he's on the other side of the ball, but what's what's Mac Jones like in the locker room? What's he like as a, a teammate, as a leader uh, on this in this team? Uh, Mac Jones, he's a great leader. Um, of course, the leader of the offense, but he's one of the leaders of the team. So um, he's one of them guys that comes in every day, in and out, and uh, works his tail off. So I think uh, a lot of people feed off his energy every day. Okay, unless we have any more, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up with uh, Jeff Spiegel. LeBron, as a, uh, as a competitor, as a college football fan, after watching college football for several weeks now, how great is it going to be to go up there and actually play? Um, it's going to be uh, great for me. Um, with last year, me being out, um, I've learned a lot. So... You know, just to be back on the field, fully healthy, and doing what I love to do, um, I can't. I don't think I really can ask for much more. Okay, we got one more here with uh, Charlie Potter. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, LeBron, I just want to ask you about a couple of young guys on the D line, uh, Tim Smith and Ishmael Sopcher. What have you seen from them in this preseason, getting ready for the season? Um, both guys are powerful. Um, for their young age, they act a whole lot older than they are. Um, they taking, you know, responsibility, you know, early on and trying to do their job and understanding, you know, the playbook and stuff like that. So uh, I've seen nothing but good things from them. Okay, guys. LeBron, I appreciate your time. We'll wrap up with you, and uh, we'll go get Mac Jones. He'll be here in just a moment, guys. Just wondering for you, how much have you uh, matured as a football player since you arrived at Alabama? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, I've definitely matured a lot. Um, you know, I've learned from a lot of great people. 
Coach Saban's obviously been a big part of that. Just watching him coach me and taking what he says and applying it to my life. Um, and obviously, my teammates, just learning from them and watching the older guys when I was younger. And now that I'm sort of an older guy now, just trying to set the example that I can for the younger guys. OK, let's go to uh, Charlie Potter. Hey, Mac, uh, just wondering what you've seen from Missouri's defense. It's going to be the first challenge of the season. Just what kind of challenges do they present you guys? Um, they're a really good defense. Uh, Ryan Walters, their defensive coordinator, does a great job um, schematically. You know, on the back end with their cornerbacks, number 14 and number 8, they look pretty good. Obviously, they might have some guys out, but those guys on the back end look good. Number 9, Tyree Gillespie, their safety. And number 1 this year, he switched numbers. Um, Bledsoe, he looks good in the back end. And then 32 is kind of like their workhorse of the defense. Nick Bolton looks really good. They have another good linebacker. He switched to number 11 this year. Um, he looks good. Uh, their defensive line is really old. I think it's all seniors up there. 78, uh, Kobe, their nose guard, gets off the ball really well. 39, Chris Turner's an edge rusher. Um, so they got some good guys up there. Uh, they got Trey Williams, number zero, is a defense end who plays well. So it's really an old defense that focuses on effort, and they make a lot of effort plays. So watching them on tape, they've been really impressive, and we got to be ready to go. OK, we will uh, move on to Jeff Spiegel. Back, uh, after watching football several weeks and finally being able to get on the field, uh, I know you're a guy who just has a great time playing the game. How much are you looking forward to getting out there? Yeah, football is fun. I mean, we all want to be out there again. You know, there's nothing better than going out on Saturdays you know, and playing with your, your best friends and playing for the coaches in the state of Alabama. So I'm really looking forward to get, getting back to that. I mean, I think everyone would say the same. We're all ready to play, and um, we're really looking forward to a great year. Tony Sakalas. Hey, Mac. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, what's your relationship like with Bryce Young? And then also, having played under Tua, what kind of, how, how are you able to give him guidance now as, as with you being the starter now? Yeah, we have a good relationship. Um, you know, he comes out to practice every day, and he, he, he puts his head down and works, and he does what he's supposed to do. So. You know, as a starting quarterback, looking down and seeing him doing his job makes me feel comfortable that if he has to step in the game, he can do his job. And, you know, being under Jalen and Tua and all that, I mean, there's a lot of things you can learn from. But really, just from a leadership standpoint, just being ready to go because you never know when you're going to have to play. And I think that applies to our whole room with Paul and the walk-on quarterbacks as well because anybody might have to play at any given moment. We'll go with David Hale now. Hey, Mac, you touched on this a little bit, uh, mentioning Jalen and Tua. And, and look, when you're in a place like Alabama, I'm, I'm sure you realize that the first time you go out and have uh, a few bad snaps, somebody's going to start talking about the five-star quarterback behind you on the roster. How, what did you learn from seeing how Jalen and Tua manage their situation uh, in terms of how you'll, not just how Bryce will handle being the backup, but how you'll handle being the starter? Yeah, I mean, Jalen and Tua did it right. Whoever was in the game at the time tried to do their job to the best of their ability. And that's all you can do, really. You can't focus on everything else, the what ifs, the this and that's. Um, just go out there. For me, if I'm in the game, get the ball to the right guy and let all the guys make plays and celebrate when we score and have fun. So that's all I can do, and everything else will just take care of itself. We'll go to Mike Rodak. Uh, Mac, John Mechie was a, a guy who was listed as a starter on the, the first depth chart yesterday. And Fans don't really know quite as much about him as they do, you know, Devontae or, or Jalen. Just what does he bring uh, to your team, and how much last year did you get a chance to work with him behind the scenes? Yeah, me and Mechie, uh, we worked together a lot during the summer. Uh, he was here and stuff, and we got all the work we could get together. Um, and just working with him, he's a really hard worker. You know, being up here late at night sometimes, he's always in here working. And, uh, you know, to see that out of a wide receiver who maybe not get his name called as much as a guy like Smitty or Waddle, you know, that's just promising because he's ready to go and he's ready to prove himself too. But our whole room is super talented from the wide receiver standpoint. And really any of those guys can come in and play. But I think Mechie has done a really good job. We'll go to Steven Smith. Hey, Mac, uh, I know Coach Saban talked about Jordan Battle and what he's done in the secondary, but you came in with Daniel Wright. How have you seen his play grow? Yeah, Daniel and I were actually roommates my freshman year. So we kind of started off with a strong bond there. 
Um, he's grown a lot. Like you can really tell that he's taking that leadership role back there, getting guys lined up, and really he's focusing on doing what he has to do now. And when he does that, he plays a lot better. Um, but he he makes plays. Like he's a guy who in practice he brings that energy, and you want a guy like that in the secondary where you can hear his words, but he's also making plays and backing it up with his play. So we'll go to James Ogletree. Yeah, Mac. Yesterday, Smitty he was talking about how. Uh, he said he has just as much trust in you as he did in Tua, and I'm not trying to make any comparison there, but just as a quarterback, how much does that assure you and make your job easier knowing that you have a lot of trust in those guys and they trust you to get them the ball as well? Yeah, I mean, that's what this whole game is about, is trusting your teammates and trusting your coaches. And obviously, Smitty and I have got a lot of work over the past four years. You know, even me being the backup, you know, a couple years ago and stuff, we still got in there and worked together. So I understand what he sees and why he does it. He's a guy that sometimes on plays, he'll tell me where the blitz is coming from. You know, so he's a guy that can, can see things and has played a lot of football. And I trust that he, he sees what I see and we're on the same page. But I think that goes along with all of our teammates. We are all kind of on the same page at this point and we're ready to go out there and play. We'll go back to Jeff Spiegel. Matt, can you, uh, I guess, talk about the challenges of playing a 10-game conference game only schedule and whatever team survives that gauntlet, uh, what would that say about that football team? Yeah, I mean, you know, a 10-game SEC schedule is, is great. I think that it gives you a challenge every week, no matter who you're playing. You know, this week, obviously, it's Missouri, so we're focused on that. But, you know, in the long run, whoever comes out and wins – wins all those games, could go down as like the best team to ever play because the SEC is the best conference uh, in America. And if you can win all those games and prove that you're the best team, then that's pretty impressive. Uh, Charlie Potter, a couple more. Hey, Mac, I know you're focused on other things, but what was your reaction when you found out that you were going to be the starter to start the season? Yeah, you know, I'm really thankful to be named that position. And I think I've earned, you know, the trust of my teammates and coaches, but like I said, we just got to keep working as a team and, and focus on this upcoming game because, you know, you got to go in there and execute and do your job. And that's for everybody, not just the starting quarterback. But anybody has to be ready to play, and we all have to be ready to go for Saturday. We'll go back to David Hale. Mac, I'm curious if you've talked to anybody from other teams that have played so far about what the experience has been in terms of, you know, less fans in the stands or the different policies and procedures on the sidelines. Just adapting to a game day situation in this environment. Have you gotten any insider advice from anybody who's already done it or from just the games you've watched? Yeah, I mean, just watching a bunch of games. At the end of the day, the field's 100 yards long and 53 and a third wide. So, I mean, it's football, right? We just play 11 on 11 and, and try and do your job every play. But, you know, there's other things that are going to go into it. It may feel a little uh, weird at first, but when that clock starts ticking, you just go out there and play. and and try and be as safe as you can, but you can't really think about it too much when you're out there playing. We'll wrap up with AP. Hey, yes, hey, Mac, how are you? Good, how about you? Oh, terrific, terrific. Survived the hurricane and the virus, both. <laughs> uh, Mac, what did you learn about yourself last year? It could be little or small, and then what contribution will Carl Tucker make? Um, last year, there was a bunch of good learning experiences all around for the whole team. You know, for me, you know, just getting in there and kind of earning the trust of my teammates, showing that I can go in there and execute to the best of my ability. And there's learning experiences along the way with that. And this year, we're going to come out and really show what we've worked on. Um, with Carl, you know, Carl is a guy that I kind of showed him around on his um, visit here, you know, before the coronavirus and all that started. But he, he's a guy that works really hard and uh, he, he makes plays and he gets to the right spot. And he's, he's a really powerful guy in the run game. So like just to have a utility guy like that is really going to help us you know, throughout the year um, with an extra guy that we can throw the ball to, run behind, things like that. Hey, Mac, we appreciate your time. I know you got meetings. Guys, right. thank you. Thanks. We'll see you guys with Coach tomorrow after practice.